everybody, and welcome back to Sew Along with Jan. And this is part two of the May Kimberbell mini quilt. Um, so this one, in this video, we're going to be doing the, um, starting the applique blocks, and this is the vase block. So this is the one with all the pretty flowers. We're also going to have some fringe going on in here. We got vinyl on the um, base. So there's actually quite a bit going on in this in this particular block. So I thought this would be a good one to do alone. And then we'll do the butterfly block too, because there's lots of applique in that as well. Um, they don't look like they're going to be hard. They just have a lot of techniques in there. So Okay, so we're going to start out with, um, I wanted to show you my fabrics. I didn't have that, I kind of thought that that little that little plaid was cute, but I didn't have any of that fabric. That's one of their newer fabrics. But I did have this one that was kind of cute. It was white with little, um, with little ladybugs and little bees on it, and I thought that would be kind of cute for mine. And then I have my, um, let's see, we have, didn't need much fabric for this one really. Most of it's done with fringe and stitching so when this is for the vase this is for the flower centers and then this is the background all of them they said to put um the shape flex on so i have shape flex on the back of each one of these pieces and the backing and then we're going to of course do our quilting here and i look through the design and and it is going to be the quilting design will be six and a half by eight and a half so you do need to use an eight by twelve hoop for this um the the six by it it would work in a six by ten if you remove the two fabric tack down lines out of the the last two steps out of the design um, if you have some software, you can do that, and it would fit in a 6x10 hoop. So I did do a video on that, on how to remove that for those people who have the 6x10 hoop only and want to do this block, and it would easily be done if you have a little bit of software. And I did a video with that, um, with the summer pillow, the, the patriotic pillow a little bit ago. I can't think of the name of it. Sweet Land of Liberty, is that what it was called? Sweet Land of Liberty, I think. And I did a little video about how to do that in software. So you might want to take a look at that if you um, have that problem and you only have a 6x10 hoop. But I do have um, a Luminaire, so I have my 8x12 hoop in, so I don't have to do that. And we're going to start by getting the, the um, quilting first. So it looks like we're going to be doing the Spring 4 in the quilting. So let's see here. I'm going to get that first. And spring four, and it's going to be the six by eight size for this block. So let's quilting spring four. Here it is. And six by eight, six by eight. So it's going to have all the little butterflies. That's really cute. Oh, butterflies, flower. That's really cute. And then we're going to hit set. <clears throat> and then we're going to get the base block. So I'll hit add and go back and get my vase block. Let's see here. Find the right folders. I have a lot of folders on here, it seems like. All right, so here's the vase block. So we'll get that one. Now, in the instructions here, it tells us that we have special instructions. So we need to, we want it um, centered horizontally. But then it says, oh, um, center it horizontally over the quilting file. Then move the embroidery file downward until the bottom edges of both files are aligned. So you can see that, um, you can see the red line now, right now on my vase. So we're going to go ahead and hit set. And I'm going to go ahead and use my move button. So I'm going to hit edit and move so that I don't get it out of alignment this way. But we want the two files to be um, lined up. Now I think what it's meaning here, I'm going to look very closely at this instructions. It looks like to me they want it lined up at the bottoms because that part of a little bit of that um, vase is going to sit in your seam allowance. So see, this line here where the batting is will be the seam allowance. So you want to line up the actual bottom line of the quilting and the bottom of the vase. So that way um, you won't have a raw edge of your um, uh, satin stitch to, to be in your seam. 
so that's where where that goes down there whoops i'm gonna have a, a kitty cat helper here she's come she decided she needed to sit on my lap for some reason so i didn't move it side to side i just brought it straight down so that the bottoms lined up okay and that's what it told us to do so we're going to hit okay and embroidery so of course we're going to start out the same way with the quilting first so we'll do the quilting that's going to be really cute and the other thing we're going to need for this we have our pieces of fabric of course and our backing we also need a piece of um the the vinyl the clear vinyl so there's a piece of clear vinyl in here i think there might be some mylar in here too for the next one but there's clear vinyl in here so we'll use that out of our embellishment kit and i'm going to go ahead and quilt this in white so I've got my white thread in my needle, bobbin thread in the bobbin. And let's go ahead and come over this way. <clears throat> and step number one will be the placement line. Let me get my little fabric out of here so we won't drop it on the floor. And we will do our placement line for the batting first. So I'm gonna get my chunk of batting ready. There's a lot going on in this block. There's fringe. Um, there's the <clears throat> vinyl, if you haven't done vinyl before. But I think there might be some fabric under the vinyl for the base. And then lots of stitching. There's the, like all of the greenery is stitched. There's quite a little bit going on in this block. So I thought it would be just nice to do this one alone. And we'll do the butterfly alone. So so we can concentrate on just that one thing all right so then before step number two we're going to lay our chunk of batting down here maybe i keep getting my stabilizer in the way here there we go oops looks like i need to move this way i'm gonna move this way a little bit because i wasn't gonna have enough this is a pretty good size block so all right Again, I'm in an eight by 12 hoop because the quilting design is six and a half by eight and a half. Um, and for those of you with a six by 10 hoop, if you have a little bit of software, um, you can get around a lot of the Kimberbell designs that are just a little bit too big for your hoop because all the quilting is gonna be approximately a half an inch bigger than the block. So like a lot of their blocks are like six by eight. That means the in the quilting will be six and a half by eight and a half. And if you have just a little bit of software, you don't need much. Um, Dime has a wonderful free software. And then if you add font pack number six for about $100, you can basically have all your basic needs taken care of for quilting um, or for um, editing and like changing colors and, and resizing and all that. And that's it's wonderful, very easy to use um, software. So I would recommend that. So if you have any questions, you know, go ahead and message me through Facebook or, or call me at the store, Shield Sewing Center, or email me. And I can tell you more about that. But if you just need some basic software, you can do so much with that. And it would, and it's not that expensive. And I can get you that little font pack too for it's around a hundred dollars. So and it's so nice because then you can just really do so. I'm gonna trim this close to the stitches here. Probably can't see me over here. I'm trying to not cut my cat's tail. She's flipping her tail up into the <laughs> into the hoop right now. So I'm trying not to cut the end of her tail off here. She all of a sudden she just has to be friendly and I think she hears me talking probably and then she has to come out and sit on my lap and she doesn't really like to sit on my lap especially if I move at all so I'm trying to be still so she'll sit still otherwise she gets up and starts running around all over me so let's see how she does okay so we got that trim close to the stitches got a piece of red in there okay then step number three will be the placement line for the fabric now this is one of the lines step number three and four are the lines 
that caused the problem with the six by 10 hoop. If you remove these two lines, you can still do this because you can just tape your fabric down on the edges. You won't have this place, you won't have this tack down line. This is the placement line and then there's a tack down line. These are the two that caused the problem in the six by 10 hoop. And if you take these out, you can just, um, you can just tape your, your fabric down to the, to the hoop here at this point instead of tacking it down and then do the, the um, quilting in the middle and then it will fit. It'll stay within the six by, by 10 area. So I would, I would, you know, that's something that you might want to consider is some basic software you can do a little editing with because you can work around a lot of stuff. I worked around having a small hoop for a very long time because I only had a five by seven hoop for a really long time and I worked around it because I had some software. So I started using software quite early on and it does help a lot. All right, so there we're gonna tack this down. That's step number four. And then step number five is going to be our quilting. So, oh my gosh, it's going to be so cute. I can't wait to see this one. So I'm going to leave my white thread in all, for all of this, and we're going, to, we're going to quilt this. And then the other, the next uh, special instruction is after we do the quilting, we go to step number three in the um, actual design. So we'll have to skip down a couple of steps to get to step number three. So I'll be back in a minute when we get this quilted, and then we'll go on to step number three in the actual design. Okay, so here's our quilting. We got, the, oh, look, it's really cute though with all the little flowers and everything. So I really like that. So I think the next step is going to be, so we have to move on down here to step number three, it said. So we need to move down and we're gonna start with the, with the, the uh, leaves and stuff. So let's see, we're gonna hit our negative positive needle and we're gonna go down to step number three of the design. So the first step here with, uh, with the foliage. So it's actually step number eight on my machine since we had the five steps of the quilting first. So that would be step number eight. Okay, so we're, go we're good with that. And the first color of the foliage is going to be, it's the one, with the X through it, the green with the X. So I have to go look at my little, my little color thing here. And it's my moss green. So it's going to be my darkest green. So I'm using moss green, which is, I think it's 515. Yeah, this is one of my favorite greens. And we're going to put that in first and do the foliage. So I think the next three steps are just going to be some stitching. So I'll stop in between to show you the colors I'm using. And then we will move on to, I think, I think it's the next part is the first time we have to applique is the mm, oh it's going to be the flower centers are going and then we'll do the um, fringe so we're going to do that first and then I think it goes down and does the um, base at the end so I'm going to do my moss screen and then I'll be back whoops helps Jan if you if you um, thread the machine did you know that it helps if you thread the machine first I have that trouble every now and then. I use a PR, I use a 10 needle a lot. So, you know, you thread like all 10 needles and then you, and then you just let it run, you know. Well, I kind of forget to thread the needle sometimes here. Okay, so this is the first step of the foliage. So I'm just gonna let this run. It's gonna take a little bit. Um, this this uh, stitch out is about 40 minutes. So, so I will go ahead and turn off the camera while this finishes up and then I'll bring in the next color so you can see what I'm gonna use. Okay, so we're done with the first color of green. And the second color of green is going to be my lighter one. This is fresh green, which is 027. It's going to do a little bit more. This one, this one did so quite a while. So, whoops, I got to get the right one here. This one did so quite a while. So, there's quite a few stitches in this one because it has all the fringe too. So, that takes a little while. All right, so I'll go ahead and put my second color in. This is fresh green. And I'll be back for the third color. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got the second color in. There wasn't quite as much of that one. And my third color is mint. And I think it's 07 or 0178. So for the third color of the green. And then I think we're going to go on to... Um, oh, we're going to put the flower centers in first. So then we'll do, we'll be starting some applique. Okay, so I've got my, um, let's see, 0332 pollen yellow thread in. Because the next step, which is step number six in the instructions here on page nine of, of the uh, made um, instructions, is going to be the placement line for the the um, centers of the flower. So I'm going to use this yellow. So I went ahead and put in my yellow thread and then we're going to do the placement lines first and then we'll start the applique. Let's see and then we're going to do yeah we're going to do the applique and then oh then we're going to start working on the fringe of the flowers. A lot of the um, a lot of the stitching in this particular design was in the all these leaves there was a lot of leaves and foliage in here so so we'll do the placement lines for all these little circles for the centers and then we will do some applique and they did tell you to put the shape flex on the back of all of the, the fabrics for this one Again, so this one has the shape flex on the back, and so does the little one for the base. I don't know that you would have had to put it on, but I think it depends on how dark your yellow is, and then also your background. So if it, that way it won't show through. And then, yeah, so the next whole, all the next steps are going to be fringe. So this will be fun. My, my flowers are going to be a totally different color because I had to go a little darker and more pink. So my flowers are really going to be different colors than in the picture. So, okay. Did we get them all? All right. So this P, one big piece should, would, should cover the whole thing. So let's make sure we got all of the little, I know where all my little centers are. So I think it should be okay. Yep. Looks like I got it. Okay. Put our fabric down, and then the next step is going to be the tack down lines then for all of those little circles. And then I think it's going to tell us then to trim the fabric close to the stitches on that. So I'll just turn the camera off for a minute while this is doing all these little tack downs, and then I'll come back and we'll do the trimming, and we'll move on to the fringe. Okay, so I'm trimming my little flower centers here close to the stitches, so I'll just show you the the end of it here. I think everybody has trimmed like this before. I think they gave you SVGs for most of these, but you know, so many of these um, these shapes are so simple. I, I normally trim in the hoop. I do love my scan and cut, and I cut a lot of stuff out with my scan and cut, but my favorite thing to use um, it for is like real intricate lettering. It's so much easier to get it into the placement lines. So when I do little stuff like this, this is so simple to trim. So, all right, so we got that trimmed. <clears throat> now, the next step says we're on step number, we're on page nine, and we're right before step number eight. And it says to change the bobbin thread to a water-soluble thread or a visible color. So if you are going to use a water-soluble thread, you, you are, we're going to switch that now, and that's what I'm going to do. You can also put in like a, a visible thread on the back, like maybe black. So something, if you just want to, you want to do the old-fashioned way of doing fringe, you would cut your bobbin thread, which works just fine. But in this case, um, these are these flowers, I really want to make sure that I don't trim through the loops. So I want the loops to be very, um, very, um, very perfect. So I thought I'm going to do the water-soluble thread this time. So what we're going to do is change to that water-soluble thread. And I have, my brand is Vanish. The other kind that, um, I usually have it in the store, is Madeira. So I'm not going to put this on the top. This is just going to go in the bobbin. Okay, so I have a bobbin already wound here of that vanish. 
And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, I told you I was using um, pre-wound bobbins. So when you use pre-wound bobbins, um, the way the machines um, work now and the, the bobbin cases and so on is you do need to use your tight bobbin case for your pre-wound bobbins. The, this is the tighter bobbin case that has the blue dot in it. Most of the machines have a blue dot. Some have a pink. So if you're using pre-wound bobbins uh, regularly, you really should be switching your bobbin cases in and out. Um, I know it's a little bit of a hassle. Anytime you wind a bobbin, including embroidery bobbin thread, if you're using the Brother embroidery bobbin thread, you can just use the standard bobbin case that comes in the machine, which has kind of this green, I don't know if you can see it very well, in the light, but there's kind of a green paint on the screw here. So if you wind anything you wind, sewing thread, brother or baby lock embroidery bobbin thread, um, in this case, this water soluble thread, um, your sewing thread, your quilting thread, whatever you wind yourself can go in this. So if you don't want to have to ever replace your bobbin case, buy bobbin thread on the spool, the brother or baby lock bobbin thread, and wind it yourself. Then you never have to switch this in and out. I don't mind switching it in and out every now and then. So this is my pre-wound bobbin and my, my blue dot bobbin case. I'm just going to put my bobbin in here. Set it up on my machine, put this one in for my water soluble because I wound that one myself. And it's easy to remember. That's how I remember. If you wind it yourself, including embroidery bobbin thread that you buy, brother by, or baby lock. Uh, baby lock's called finishing touch. It's the same thread. They just call it something different. And or the brother. Then you use your standard bobbin case. So that's how I remember. It's very easy. The bobbin cases have kind of changed over the last few years, so we found that we really do need to switch them out. We used to be able to adjust the standard one for the pre-wounds enough, but they really don't adjust well enough now. So um, I get a little bit of white showing through unless I use my tight bobbin case. So now I have my regular bobbin case in and my water soluble in my bobbin. Okay. So we're going to put this in here, and then we're going to start doing fringe. So this is the part of the flowers that are going to actually um, come loop, have the little loops and, and come loose from the water cycle. So I've got to figure out what color it is, though. Let's see. Which one? It's, it's one of the, see, mine are going to be a little different color, so I need to go check my color here. So I think it's, oh yeah, it is going to be my dark purple. So it's the darker purple that I use. So my 614, I think it is. So let me go find that. So that's the first one we're going to do with the water soluble in the bobbin. So we'll get the purple and do the purple flowers and then I think it's going to do some pink flowers I think with it. So so mine are going to be just a little darker than the in the picture. But it will take a little bit to do this because there's quite a, there's four of them and then it's going to do a couple lighter ones. So this is going to be the fringe flowers and then the second color is going to be let's see here. The second color is going to be the one with the polka dot. Let's see, pink with the polka dot. I can't remember what color that is. It's my, oh, it's actually going to be the lilac. So they're going to be like a, a dark purple and a lighter purple. Yeah, my light lilac. So it's going to be, I think it's this one. No, not this. Yeah, I think it's this one. Light lilac. Yeah, eight one two. So this, the other ones are going to be this color. I think they'll be pretty. All right, so I will be back in a moment when these are done. So there's four dark ones and three, I think three or two or three of the lighter ones. So I'll be back in a minute to go to the next step. Okay, so we're ready for the second set of flowers. I got all the dark ones done, and then this is going to be my light lilac. Light lilac. It's hard to say. Uh, 810. And so that is going to be the last. Oh, that's only two. For this and then these are all the ones and I'm still got my I've still got my water my water soluble in the bobbin for these and then we're gonna we're gonna switch the bobbins again after these are done to go back to the standard thread so I'll be back in a minute and I'll we'll go through the the switching of the bobbin cases again and, and putting in our regular bobbin thread okay so there's all of our flowers 
So this is the part, these wide satin stitches, that's the part that will become fringe because we have that water soluble um, thread in there. So now what we need to do is I'm going to go back in here, I'm going to open my needle plate up, and again this is the luminaire, and, the, and what I'm talking about for the bobbin threads and stuff is for the brother and baby lock machines. If you have another brand of machine you may not have to do this, it depends on the type of bobbin threads you need. And this is my, um, that water soluble. So what I, what I do with this is I always leave it attached to my water soluble th um, spool so I know what it is. I have some of these little things that attach them so I don't get it mixed up with something else. So Okay, so here's my regular bobbin case. I'm going to take that out now. I've got my tight one with the blue dot in it with my pre-wound bobbin. And I have... I am actually using some different pre-wound bobbins. I use, I've been using NEB pre-wound bobbins, which are L. They're the little skinny ones. I've been using those for many, many years, and I actually really like them. And they work just fine. Um, but they are thinner than a standard uh, bobbin for this machine, but they still work fine. Um, so I've kind of gone, I'm, I'm trying out the Filtech. Again, Filtech has a class 15 pre-wound bobbin, um, and I have to change the bobbin case anyway now. I didn't used to have to for this thread, but I always did for this one, and I've tried these, and I like them. But, um, so I've, I've been using both of them now, so either one is fine. Um, those are my two favorite. These are Filtech. Um, the number is 13305, and they're called um, class 15 clear glide white bobbin thread. So that's what I use for pre-wounds. Um, I like it because the bobbin sensor works a little better because the bobbin is the right size. Sometimes it doesn't work too well with my L's because I don't like that little posty thing. It, I, it's just hard to get the, the bobbins out so I don't put it in and um, sometimes my bobbin sensor won't work with these because the bobbin's a little short, you know. All right, so we'll go ahead and put our, bob, our tight bobbin case back in and I'm going to put my Pre-wound bobbin. This is my Filtech one, so I'll just put that back in. That's what I was had in there. And they seem to be working good. I haven't used them for a while, and they seem to be working very well. So I'll probably they're about the same price as the others. It really doesn't. Either one is about the same price. So okay. So now we're going to switch over, and this is step number right before step number ten on page nine. And we're going to switch over, and what this is going to, so this is going to be the fringe, and now what we have to do is put in the trapping stitch, or in other words, we have to sew this down so these fringe pieces won't come completely out. So we're going to do that, and it's going to be the centers of the flowers, the little yellow center. So I'm going to put my pollen color back in again, that yellow, and it's going to stitch around the centers of the flowers, and that's what's going to hold the fringe in so it won't fall out. And that's why we need to go back to the regular bobbin thread, because we don't want that to melt away. We just want this part to melt away. All right, so this is going to be our flower centers, and this is step number 10, and then we're going to move on to uh, working on the base. Okay, so we got all of our centers in there. So what that, that little, um, the little yellow line is going to be obviously it's going around the center of our flower but it's going to hold those those um, fringes in so when we go to take them out then that will hold all that fringe so that it won't fall out okay so the next step is going to be let's see we're on step number 11 on page 9 of the instructions this is going to be the bow placement line oh we're actually going to use that little piece of grow grain ribbon so it's going to sew the little bow in so this is the ribbon, and it's going to tie around the front. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so let's do um, all of my base is going to be done with that kind of light, really, really light pink. So mine is 124 flush pink. So we're going to put that in to do these little placement lines for our little ribbon first. So we'll do that, and then we'll put the ribbon in. Okay, so let's do the placement lines so it tells us where to put them. And then what does it say? Center the bow ribbon over the placement lines as shown, tape in place. So I'm just going to kind of fold this in half while this is stitching. Kind of fold. It's a very narrow, it's like eighth inch ribbon. So I'll just kind of fold it in half so I kind of know where the center is. And then I need to find my tape. 
get my Kimberbell tape out here. Okay, so you can cut, I don't know if you can see them very well, but they're very small. So it says to center the, the bow ribbon over both placement lines as shown, tape in place. So it looks like we're taping this in place. So I'm just going to lay this over that area. So I've got the center marked here so you can kind of see. And then I'm just going to lay it, kind of center it. I'm trying to eyeball it a little bit here. Let's see. Having a little trouble though. Okay. Make it a little stronger. There we go. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to tape this down so this won't get caught. So it's really important to do that because if you, otherwise you're going to have something caught for sure. All right, so we'll tape it down over here. And we're going to tape it. It looks like she, they taped it like down over here so that, you know, you wouldn't have any... Um, You wouldn't have your tape in the way of your stitching. I'm just looking at the picture here. Okay, so let's tape it down. Because this is the picture, so you can see it. Right here it shows the picture, and it shows the placement lines here and here, and then the tape is on the outside edges. And now it's going to do... Um, yeah, the next step is going to be the, the tack down line. So I'm a little worried, though, that maybe something's going to get caught with my foot. So I'm actually going to put, we're just going to tear, we'll tear this out. I'm going to put a piece, piece of tape over the edge of that. I'm afraid my foot's going to get caught. Because <laughs> I, ask me how I know about that. I've had that happen before. So we're, we're going to put a little tape over the middle there, too. Doesn't say to do that, but I can always rip that off. It's paper tape, and it'll come right off. So, okay. So let's do step number, this is step number 12, which is um, the tack down. So we'll do that first, and then I'll tear that tape out of there. I'm just going to leave the same color in. Okay, so there's the first one. I was just worried that it might get stuck, and I'm more than happy to tear the tape out of there before we go on. Some machines' feet jump up and down, but the brother and baby locks, for the most parts, don't. You know, they're they're stationary, and so it it sometimes it works fine to not tape, but sometimes it doesn't, and it gets caught. So I'll be happy to pull just pull that right out of there. See, no problem. And then I didn't have it get stuck. Okay, so I'm going to leave this tape though here so that it's taped out of our way. And then the next step is going to be the placement line for the vase. So I'm going to leave the pink in. Uh-oh, I'm going to have another helper here. You going to come and help me? She um, had her supper. So now she thinks she needs to have treats, I'm sure. After you eat, then you have treats, you know. Okay, so then here's my, my real light colored pink fabric with the shape blocks on the back. SF101, and I'm going to go ahead and cover that up, that line, and then we will tack, do the tack down line for this. So let's hold it in place, and then we're going to trim close to the stitches. Remember, we lined this up at the bottom so that that raw edge, there'll be a little raw edge right here, but it'll be inside the seam allowance, so it won't show. So we're going to stitch, we're going to trim these close to the stitches. And then step number 15 at the top of page 9 is going to be the outline, the base satin stitch outline. Okay, so we're going to do, trim this. And be careful, don't trim your through your, your ribbon, it's under there, so just be careful. I'm going to pull it up so I won't under my ribbon. Just be careful of that. Because knowing me, I would trim right through it, you know. So I'm going to be very careful again. All right. 
that. And we'll go down here. And I'll trim along the bottom too. But see, that's going to be in the seam allowance, so we'll be fine because it's going to the seam allowance will be about right here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it'll be about right there. So we'll be good with that. So I'll trim this off too. Okay. So there's our face. And then the satin stitches. So I'm going to leave that same color in and we're going to do the satin stitches. Make sure I get this little, I got a little hair in there. There we go. All right, so now we're going to do the satin stitches for the base. And then I think the next step is going to be the uh, vinyl. So then we'll do, a, I think we're going to leave the same color in and we'll be do, and work with the vinyl next. Okay, so we've got the satin stitches on the vinyl, and this is step number 15 on the top of page 9. And now we, we've got, here's the little piece of vinyl, and we're going to take the vinyl and we're going to lay it over the vase. This is where you want to make sure that you don't have any little strings any there in there, or you don't have any cat hair, in my case, on your vinyl or anything like that before you lay this down because once it's down it's kind of down so make sure you don't have anything in there you don't want I'm gonna lay this over this and I might go ahead I usually um, tape a little bit for the vinyl I'm not a big taper but sometimes the vinyl is so it's so slidey so I'm just gonna put a couple little pieces up here to tape it down in the corners and then Step number 16, I'm going to leave the same color in. It's just going to do a, like a little um, tack down stitch. And it's going, then we're going to trim the vinyl kind of, oh, maybe about an eighth of an inch away or so from the stitches. Because this is going to be a raw edge applique. I think it's going to kind of go all the way around. Yep. That'd be really cute. I couldn't tell if there was just vinyl or if there was some fabric under the vinyl, but there was fabric under the vinyl to make the, the little vase look kind of pink. All right, so then we're going to trim this close to the stitches. Well, and it says close to the stitches, but kind of, I usually leave a little bit around it just to make sure I don't, it doesn't rip. You don't want your vinyl to rip. So I'm going to untape here. Get the tape off of here, maybe. Oops, let's try this one down here. There we go. And then we're going to trim it maybe about an eighth of an inch away. What I usually do is I use my satin stitches to help me stay about an eighth of an inch. So I'm kind of going along the edge of my satin stitches. Be careful of your ribbon again, because you don't want to cut that ribbon. I'm going to go this way. It's always hard with these big, big hoops to get them flipped around. So I'm just kind of using the edge of my satin stitches to give me something to go by here. Go down this way and be careful of the ribbon. Make sure you don't catch that in your scissors. It's going to look really cute. I like that wasn't sure about my colors because I didn't have some of the peachy colors and the kind of magenta colors. I had purples and pinks, so I think it's going to be okay. All right, and then we'll do this one too. Kind of got a little off here, so let's see if I can kind of neaten that up a little bit. There we go. And then go down here. This is going to be in the seam allowance, so there we go. So there's our vase. And then we're going to go along, and now the next steps are going to be for the fringe. So it says, I'm going to leave it in the hoop, you know, and I think I need to neaten up the one side of my base here a little bit, too. Let's see, I'm kind of messy right here, so let's see if I can get that cleaned up just a little. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I always have trouble cutting vinyl because it's so... You want to be kind of neat about it. You want it to look nice, but it's a little hard to see. <laughs> there we go. It's clear. All right. So then it says to turn the hoop to the back, and we're going to remove the fringe um, in one of two methods. So if you use the, the standard method, 
um, like with black bobbin thread on the back. You're going to use your seam ripper, you know, and, and cut through these stitches right here that you can see. And usually I use like black, but I use the water soluble. So what I found that works the best for me is to use a little spray bottle. So I have my little, actually it's a little Kimberbell bottle that I just put water in it. Um, and then I'm just going to spray the fringe stitches with water and gently rub the stitches to dissolve the bobbin thread. So what I like to do though is I, so these are the, the ones that we, we need to kind of concentrate in this area. So I'm just going to spritz this like that and I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. Okay, so I'll turn the camera off for a minute. So I'm going to let, I'm going to, I'm going to spritz it twice. So I found that this worked the best for me. I spritz it and let it sit for a little bit. And then I'm going to spritz it again and let it sit. So maybe five to 10 minutes to let it sit and let that um, thread start dissolving. Okay, because I found that if I didn't let it sit, it would not dissolve. And then I found that I used my kind of like my thumbnail or like even like those um, seam rippers that have the eraser on them, it'll, it'll allow it to open up that, that bobbin thread. So we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Let me spray it one more time and then I'm going to let it set. Don't, you don't need to have it soppy wet, but it does need to be kind of wet for that water soluble to dissolve. So I'm going to let it set for a little bit and then I'll come back and we'll start working with the fringe. Okay, so I'm working on these now, and I'm, I'm still on the back. I let it sit for a little bit. I spritzed it a couple times. And this bobbin thread, it's kind of like when you wash out um, freestanding lace. It gets a little bit gooey. It's almost like, you know, the stuff that, we, you know, we use to make lace, and we have to wash it out. So you have to let it sit for a little bit, you know, to get it. But you do get, a, like, a residue from it and it's sort of like that um, stabilizer we use for the lace. So the thing that works the best for me is to loosen everything up on the back with my thumbnail. I just use my thumbnail. If you don't have nails, I just have real short nails so I usually use my thumbnail to do this. But if you need to use um, like something that you can rub with, you're going to have to rub along where those lines are to get them to loosen up for you on the back. So I like to do that on the back all the way around each one. And you can see that I've done this on, and you get a little bit of this residue from the thread. But you do have to help it along. And then I let it sit probably for a good 10 minutes before I started scratching on the back of it. So I kind of scratched the back of it. And I've got one little piece back here just that just does not want to let go on this one. So I'm going to have to trim through that one just to get it to go. There we go. Okay. So I think I've got them all loose on the back here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to the front. Make sure I don't have all that goop all over my, for my, since I'm sitting at my machine here. And then I'm going to, oops, got to take some tape off here to get these ribbons out of my way. Let's tape these down here. Just get them out of our way for a minute. Okay. And then what I like to do is take the back of my seam ripper and just pull, or your, again, your thumbnail, whatever works for you, to pull those little loops free from the front. So get them loose from the back first, because that's the hardest part is um, getting those loose. And you do have to help it a little bit, but it does work quite well once you get it going. And I'm just going to go around the outside edge. And get our flowers going here. And then you can see there's a, still a few that are being stubborn under here. That I might not have gotten those completely loose on the back. So I'll have to check. So I like to pull up the little loops and see like there's some right here that aren't loose. Let's see where those are on the back here. They might not have quite loosened up from the back. So give them a little more help from the back. There's a couple up here. So when you start pulling them through, then you can tell if you need to scratch a little bit more on the back. But I go back and forth and scratch on the back and scratch on the front until they're nice and loose. And you can tell that they're loose because if you pull it up 
you know, if you pull it up on the sides, then you can tell where they're loose. And see, I like doing this method with these kind of flowers because I want them to be beautiful and like all loopy, you know. Because um, if you if you trim them, you know, with your seam ripper on the back, I have problems because then I I trim through some of the little loops and then they're not so pretty, you know. So this type of flower, it depends on what I'm doing. Some of them I don't mind that, but these I wanted them to be really loopy. So again, I'm going to just kind of scratch with my, my thumbnails. So I'm getting there. So there might be a couple more I might have to, on this one, I may have to turn it over again. There might be a couple that are kind of being stubborn back here. So I'm going to see if there's some spots that are being stubborn back here. And then turn it back over again. But try not to get it too soppy wet. You don't really need to. It just needs to be misted and then let it set for a little bit to let that, you know, water work with the with the um bobbin thread yeah okay and then we'll do this one so see you should, you're just going to go around and work a little bit from the front work a little bit from the back and it does take a little bit of time you have to kind of take your time and work with it but oh my gosh these are going to be so pretty so i'm just working a little bit from the front on this one now and then i'm i have looks like i'm going to have to work a little bit from the back again so I'll do that I'll come back when I get these all done I'm just going to work work from the front and the back I noticed that I have to work a little bit more from the back if I'm going through like more stitching see there's there's the leaves under here so I probably need to go to the back and work a little bit more but these are going to be so cute so let me go ahead and work on it a little bit and I'll come back on um, and show you all my flowers Okay, so I've been playing around with these, and I think I got them all done. And there's a little bit of the, the stuff from the bobbin thread on top. And if you have a little, you know, like if you have a couple little fringes that kind of, you know, kind of like pull out a little bit too much, you, you might need to give it just a little haircut. You can just give it a little trim so that they don't stick out. But that looks so nice. And I got, I got light purple and dark purple flowers. And then, um, so I'm going to go ahead and move my camera over, and then we'll get our little uh, block all um, trimmed up. And I think what I'm going to do, though, let's go ahead and tie this little bow on here before we do the trimming so we don't get our, we don't accidentally, with my luck, <laughs> I would accidentally, um, so let's go ahead, ahead and just tie our little bow here so that we don't cut our ribbons off. Let's tie our, tie our little bow. For the vase, that's cute. There we go. And then I had, I don't do very well tying. Sorry, guys. So let's see here what happens. Let's see if we can let you give it another try here. I have a little trouble with these little narrow ribbons sometimes. There we go. All right. So we got our little bow. So that way we don't cut it off when we get ready to do the trimming. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera over and we will trim our block. And this one's going to be six and a half by eight and a half. So let me get my camera moved and we will do the trimming and we're done with the vase block. How cute is that? And I think this one also needs at the end, oh, the pom pom buds will be added later. So there's little pom poms that go like on these little, little sticks up here. Um, these little, and so you want to let this dry, of course, we can trim it and it's not too wet. It's just wet, like right in here. So we'll trim it, but, um, there's some little pom poms that we're going to stick on up in this little area here. So, so I'll be right back after I get my camera moved. Okay. So we're ready to trim our block. It really helped a lot leaving it in the, in the hoop to get that fringe out. I've got just a little bit left here. It's a little harder to get it out of the like the stitches underneath, like if you had the leaves. I struggle a little bit with that. I have two or three spots here that I just need to still work at just a little bit down here. But it's so much easier in the hoop because then it gives you, it's stretched a little bit and it gives you a little bit of something to hang on to too. All right, so we're going to trim this down with our orange pop ruler to six and a half by eight and a half. So again, that, that, um, tack down line around the edge will help us 
to get it centered. And remember, we're going to have our seam allowance down here, and it's going to cover up this little raw edge at the bottom because it's going to be in the seam. All right, so then I'm going to turn my, I've got my six and a half by eight and a half inch rectangle ruler here. I'm going to, oops, hold this down carefully. I'm going to start in just a little bit, push back into the corner, and then push forward. Do the top, start in, pull back, and push forward. That really helps me. I When I started doing that, I, I do much better pull back into the corner and push forward. This one. And push forward. All right. So I think we got it. Six and a half by eight and a half this one is. Oh my gosh, isn't that cute? Look at there. With all the little fringe flowers. Yeah, see I've got a couple here. I noticed that they're still stuck down in these little leaves here, so I'll have to play with that just a little bit more. But, oh my gosh, isn't that cute? And then let it dry nice. It'll it'll just have to sit and dry a little bit after the, spritzing the back. But I do have to work a little bit down in here to get the rest of the, the little fringes out of those flower or out of those um, leaves. So. so thank you so much for joining me for part two of the... Um, of the May Kimberville mini quilt. And um, in part three, we're going to do the butterfly block. So that'll be the next, the next video. Um, and so if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, so along with Jan, please do, because that way you get all the notifications when I have new videos and so on that are coming up. So anyway, um, thank you so much. And I will see you in part three to do the butterfly block. Thanks, everybody.